Android, the operating system that I use has gotten pretty good over the past few years, turning it from a bloated slow mess to an operating system that's really efficient and really snappy. But recently I decided to try out Windows Phone again and it reminded me of some of the things that I missed with the operating system, so I thought I'd talk about them in this video. These are the top 5 things that I'd love to see be brought over from Windows Phone to Android. Number one is Live Tiles, so I still love Live Tiles. Yes, Android has widgets and they're great. I use one for a to-do list and one for the weather. And admittedly, they are better in the sense of you being able to directly interact with them. But there's still a bunch of icons around those widgets that just do nothing. They can't be resized and they don't show any information. Whereas with Live Tiles, I love the fact that Basically, any app is an opportunity for it to show you additional information. And then if you want to go into the app to see more, you then tap on the live tile and it brings you into the app. And to be honest, I just think live tiles look really nice. I mean, it's not a look that I imagine everyone's going to like, but after moving away from Windows Phone, I did actually miss the live tiles quite a bit. Number two is a better app drawer. So this is something that I think looks great both on Windows 10 for desktop and Windows 10 mobile. On Android, the apps are kind of just thrown into a big grid in the app drawer. They're not really organised that well. I mean, technically they are by alphabetical order, but they aren't really divided up in any other way. But I love the fact that on Windows 10, apps are divided by their letters. And if you want to go to a specific letter, you can just tap on any of the letters that are shown on the screen, then tap on which letter you want to go to, and it brings you straight there. It makes it really easy to find an app with having to resort to search or just scrolling through a long grid. and Honestly, I feel like it's a lot better than the way that Android does it. Number three is lock screen features. So I basically never use the lock screen on Android. Yes, at the bottom there are the options for um, using the voice assistant as well as opening the camera. But honestly, for me, the lock screen is kind of just something I have to get past every time I want to get into my phone. I never really stay on it. But on Windows 10 Mobile, the page is very customizable. You can have a certain app be a predominant app on the phone. So for example, on this phone, it's the calendar. And then underneath it, you can have certain notifications show up under there. So for example, how many emails you've got, how many phone calls you've missed and stuff like that. There also used to be this nice little feature where you could wave your hand over the phone and it would basically show up the lock screen, but a dark version of it. Since I upgraded this phone to Windows 10 Mobile, even though it wasn't supported for Windows 10 Mobile, it's not a feature that I can show on here anymore. But it's one that I did used to use a lot and was pretty great. And I think it was before the whole ambient display thing on Android. I might not be 100% right about that, but it feels like they had that feature very early on. Number four is animations. So in case you didn't know, I'm a big fan of animation. In fact, I've got a whole channel dedicated to animation alongside this channel. And the animations also apply to phones too. I actually really appreciate animations on phones and I do like when they put time and effort into them. And I really like the Windows Phone animations. Yes, the animations on Android are okay, they're not bad. But the animations on Windows phones just felt so much more snappy and fluid. I really like the animations on them, especially on Windows Phone 8.1. I love the whole flying out tiles thing that they used to do. Um, I don't know why they changed that on Windows 10 Mobile. Number five are dedicated camera buttons. So you may not have known about this, but every Windows phone was required to have a dedicated camera button. And this button was used not only to launch the camera from anywhere, but also to actually take the picture. So honestly, I'm kind of surprised that this hasn't popped up on more Android phones. I do feel like it's a really nice feature. Yes, some Android phones do have the option to double press the power button and have it open up the camera. And then from the camera, you can press one of the volume keys and that will take the picture. But this feels a lot more finicky to how it is just having a single button on Windows phone. It is just a little button to add in. And since a lot of phones are really pushing how good their cameras are, I'm surprised no one else really took this up with their phones. The camera button is also just naturally in a better place to take the picture rather than having to rely on the volume keys, which are mainly placed to be handy for when you're holding the phone in portrait mode and want to change the volume. I've also got another feature which I'm going to add in as a bonus number six. This 
isn't necessarily always an advantage on Windows Phone over Android, and it is very app specific, so I just kind of want to put it in as a bonus. But that's bottom browser navigation. So on Windows Phone, on Microsoft Edge, everything is actually at the bottom when it comes to browser navigation. I don't know why all the apps just don't like doing this on Android. It seems kind of obvious that it should be at the bottom. It works really well on Windows Phone and yeah, it just makes everything easier to reach, especially with phones getting so big nowadays. Yes, the Edge browser on Android, for example, does give you the option to access some of the settings from the bottom, but it just seems like splitting up the two for no apparent reason. You may as well just have everything at the bottom, have the browser navigation at the bottom and all of that to save on buttons and to just have everything be reachable. It just seems to work a lot better and honestly it looks kind of nice too having it at the bottom. Have you got your own list or is there anything that you think I missed off? Be sure to let me know down in the comment section down below and be sure to click over this way to see some other videos that you might like. For example, this video here where I'm basically just talking about what it's like to use Windows Phone in 2020. But for now, I hope you'll have a great day. I'll see you on the next video. Bye.